If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. It turns out that the first thing we need to do in solving this question is to figure out the number of gold atoms that are flowing through this wire. And the formula that allows us to do this is the following. And this is a formula you might have learned in chemistry. It tells us that the number of atoms is equal to the mass of gold divided by the molar mass of gold. Now, the mass of gold is given to us in kilograms. What we need to do is look up the molar mass of gold from a periodic table. And when we look up that mass, we see it has a value of 197. And it turns out that the unit for that mass would be grams per mole. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the given mass as well as the molar mass of gold. Now, it turns out that there's a couple of problems with our setup. And the first problem to note is that we have kilograms in the numerator, but grams in the denominator. And so those units will not end up canceling. So what we're going to have to do is convert the grams in the denominator into kilograms. And so we'll multiply by the following conversion factor. This way we'll see that the grams cancel and the kilograms will also cancel. Now if we compute this, the only unit that's left standing is moles. But we technically don't want moles. We want the number of atoms. And for that, we have to turn to the conversion factor you might have learned in chemistry, that one mole of gold would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So just notice that this moles right here algebraically moves to the numerator. And once it gets up there in the numerator, it's going to cancel with the moles that we've just written in the denominator. So we would finally be left with atoms of gold. So we'll pick up our calculators and process this computation. And when we do that, we get a value of approximately 9.93 times 10 to the 21st atoms of gold. And it turns out that this is the number we need in order to proceed. We next turn to the current equation, which tells us that current is equal to the amount of charge that passes a given point divided by the time. Now, we were given a time of 2.78 hours. What we need to next figure out is the amount of charge that's passing. And the amount of charge would simply be the number of gold atoms that are flowing through the wire multiplied by the charge on a gold atom. The question tells us that we can assume that the gold ions carry one elementary unit of positive charge. The elementary unit of positive charge is equivalent to E, which we will later see is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So again, the total charge is simply the number of gold atoms multiplied by the elementary charge on each one, and then we're going to divide this by the time. We'll go ahead and plug in the value of N that we found, the value of E, as well as the time. The only thing about the time is that we're going to have to convert it into seconds. Notice the conversion that one hour is 3600 seconds. And when we pick up our calculators and compute this, we get a value of approximately 0.159 amps. And if you needed to convert that to milliamps, you can just move the decimal over three places to the right. So you'd get 159 milliamps. And that is the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.